Hi, my name is Bill, and today I'm going to show you how to replace your basket drive and brake assembly. The reason why you might have to do this is because your bearings have gone bad, causing a loud screeching noise, and your brakes are worn out. For this repair, you'll need a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, a spanner wrench, a hammer, a pair of pliers, a pair of channel locks, and a ratchet with a long extension and a 716 socket, as well as a half inch socket. Warning. Before doing any repairs, please disconnect your power source. So this is our washer here. It's a KitchenAid, and this is what we're going to use for our repairs. Keep in mind, yours might be a little bit different at home, but the same techniques should still apply. Now we're going to grab a pair of channel locks, and we're going to remove the water hoses. Make sure before removing the water hoses that you do turn off the water. And when you take the water hoses off, just keep in mind there might be some water still in the lines. So now we're going to remove our drain hose. We're just going to use a pair of pliers, pinch that clamp in, move it up, and pull the drain hose off. Keep in mind there still might be some water in there. So keep a towel or something handy nearby or a bucket to drain that into. We're going to take a Phillips head screwdriver and remove the two screws holding the control panel on on the front side. And now we're going to have to remove the other two screws on the back again with our Phillips head screwdriver. And now that you've got those two screws off, you can remove your control panel. It should just pull right up. Just push forward, pull it right up. I'm going to start by Taking off our air pressure hose, we'll remove each of these wires. All right, now we're just going to pinch this clip, pull this one out, and now we'll get our flathead screwdriver and remove the grounding wire. And I'm just going to put the screw back in there so that we remember what hole it was in, just to make everything a little bit easier. Alright, now we just have to remove this. There's clips on both sides. And now we just pinch the clips in and pull the, wa the wires out. There we go. Now that all the wires are unhooked, we can set the uh, front control board off to the side. Next, I'm just going to remove these two wires here. So we've got a clip on it. Pinch that and pull that out. And this wire here, there's a little tab on it. You just pull the tab up and pull it out. So, pull that out. And now I'm just going to put the screw back in, just so we remember where it's supposed to go. There we go. And the last two screws we got to take out are down here at the bottom. Now we've got the clips here, and we're going to undo this. Just with our screwdriver, we're pulling it forward and it pops right out. Same thing with this one. Take our screwdriver and that'll pop right out. I'm just going to take these clips, set them off to the side so they don't fall anywhere and don't get lost. Take these out too. Just set them off to the side. And now I'm just going to pull up, tilt this back. And now we'll come right out. Alright, so with the panel off now, take this tube off. Now we'll get our pliers. 
grab the clamp. Okay. And now the hose will come off just by wiggling a bit. And we can lay the panel down so it's out of the way. Now we're going to take off this part of the agitator. There's a small uh, cap in here. We'll take that out as well. And now there's a bolt holding this down, which we'll take out next. Now we can pull this right out. So we're going to get our spanner wrench. We've got four little notches that'll line up with the holes there. We've got a hammer because it's going to be tight and you're not going to be able to get it by hand. So we're going to take the hammer and just tap it a couple of times to loosen it. We're going to go counterclockwise. Now that we've got it loosened, we can just undo the rest by hand. And pull that right out. Alright, so now we're going to undo the clips holding the uh, tub ring on. There we go. And we can set this off to the side here. Alright, now normally you should be able to pull the tub right out, but in our case we've got a bit of corrosion all around the ring here, holding the inner tub to this shaft. So I'm just gonna work my way around with a screwdriver. And we're gonna get as much corrosion as I can. And hopefully that'll loosen up the tub and I'll be able to pull it out. Now we've got that uh, corrosion cleaned out a bit. And pull the inner tub right out. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to pinch in on this tab right here so we can remove the clip off of our motor. And now I'm going to unplug all the wires here. And we're just going to set that off to the side here, out of our way. So now I'm going to be tilting this back. And since it's got no frame, it's going to be a little bit awkward but we're just going to tilt it back on its side here. There we go. And now we're going to remove the clips for this pump here. We're going to use our screwdriver, pry it up, and then we'll pull this tab out. Same thing on the other side. And turn it 90 degrees and pull the tab out. Now we can pull the pump straight out and we'll just move that off to the side here for us. And we'll do the same thing with these clips. We're just going to undo those clips and pull them off as well. And we're just going to use our screwdriver, pry it up, and we're going to pull this clip out. Same thing on this one. Use a screwdriver to pry it right off and then turn it 90 degrees so you can pull it out. Now we're going to take our ratchet again and with a half inch socket we're going to remove three bolt holes and just get it loose and spin it the rest of the way out. Now we can take the motor off and we can get the grommet that's sitting right here. Put that back on the motor where it's supposed to go. We'll set this off to the side. Now we can pull this whole assembly off. So now we're going to rotate this counterclockwise 
and pull out. That'll release the tension on the brake. And then we can just pull the rest of this out. And give it a little bit of a wiggle. It's having a hard time. And there you go. Now you can grab your new OEM replacement basket drive and brake assembly. If you don't have one already, you can find one on our online store. So your new basket drive and brake assembly is also going to come with these extra springs. So you can just pinch it with the channel locks to remove it and release it slowly. Got these little metal ends on it here. So you're going to take those off, remove the piece in the middle, and then you'll put it inside your other spring. So we're going to put the spring back together now. And it's got a couple of slots right here. And we're going to line those slots up on the brake assembly. We'll line that up there. Squeeze the spring in. And then just rotate it so everything lines up. There we go. Same thing with the other springs. So we'll just pinch on this spring right here to loosen it and we'll release it slowly and take that off. So now when we put the spring on, we're going to line up these small slots here with the tabs right here. And we're just going to put this on. There we go. And now we can slide it on and we'll get our channel locks and squeeze in on this to tighten it up. And as we squeeze on it, we should be able to slide it right in. Once it's in, you can release, just snap it right in, just like that. So now we'll put the assembly back in. And it might take a little bit of work just to push it in. Turn it counterclockwise and that will loosen it up. And then you got it back in. So we're going to line up the bolt holes the best we can as we're pushing it on. And we've got it locked into place. So now we can put the bolts back on. So we're going to put this back on, make sure when you tip it, none of the grommets fall back off. They have a tendency to do that sometimes. And we're going to line everything up here. And you can spin this just a little bit to line up the little rubber piece on the bottom as well. And once you've got everything lined up properly, it should all just fall right on in. There we go. Now we're going to grab our motor clips and we're going to slide them into the slots. Turn it 90 degrees. Once it's in. And clip it right on. Same thing on the bottom. Slide it into the slot here. Turn it 90 degrees and clip it back on. Then we'll do the same thing with this pump. Put our tube back through here. So make sure everything's lined up and it'll slide back on. And we'll grab those retaining clips, insert it into tab into the slot and then clip it back on, turn it 90 degrees and clip it back on. So now we're just going to take the anchor here, slide it back up through and that's clicked back into place. And these wires put back in just how they were before. 
and I will clip the rest of the harness back into this spot. There we go. And then we'll put the rest of it back together. Now I'm going to put this on the inside here. And we can put everything else back together, starting with the covering. Put that on. And now we can lock the tabs down. There we go. I'll grab our spanner nut. We'll put that in there. We'll grab our wrench and tighten it clockwise. Then we'll grab the bottom half of our agitator. And we'll push that down. And grab the top half of our agitator. this plastic in, it comes up, just make sure everything lines up, and then it'll go down nice and smooth. Then we'll take our socket with the ratchet, we'll tighten that back up, and once the agitator starts spinning, just grab the bottom to hold it while you tighten it the rest of the way. Then you'll put this cap back in. Put the liquid soap dispenser back in. All right, so now to put this all back together, we'll start with the uh, frame again. Just make sure that the bottom is lined up with the little tabs and everything just slides right in. And we'll grab the drain tube and slide that back on. Grab our pliers, pinch on the clamp. Let's slide that down as much as we can. There we go. Now will give us a nice tight seal again. And we'll take our air hose. And we'll put that back right in here. Okay, so we're going to lift this up. And we're going to line up the bottom clips here. And slide those clips in. Make sure that's on its clips like it's supposed to be. There we go. That's back on the clips. And we can push this in all the way. And we can start to screw everything back together. Screw in the bottom ones first. So now we're going to take our clips that we set off to the side earlier. And we're going to push that back in. And same thing with this one. Now I want to put the control panel hinges back in, which we also set off to the side. And now we can hook it back up again. And we'll plug in a couple of wires here. We'll plug these ones in together. Just like that. And now we're going to feed this back through here. Take the screw out. Pull that all the way through. And we'll put that back on. There we go. Now we can plug our control board back in. And we'll put this guy right in here. And next, we'll put our grounding wire back in. We'll take this off. And here's our grounding wire. Now we can plug this in right here. And our air pressure switch right back in here. 
Now we'll sit back up. Line up the little tabs here into the slots. And at the same time, we also want to make sure that the back panel is underneath the control panel. Okay, now everything's all lined up and we can screw back the hinges. So now we'll just line the hinges up with the hole and screw it back in. Now we can turn this back around and get our last two screws in. All right, and now we can hook everything back up. We're gonna put our drain hose back on. And to do that, we're simply gonna squeeze the clamp, move it up a bit. We're gonna attach this back to the connection here. And once that's pushed all the way down, we'll get our players again. Grab that clamp and wiggle it down. And now we've got a nice secure connection. And now we're gonna screw our water hoses back on. Make sure you've got your hot going to your hot, your cold going to your cold. On this model, it's labeled C and H. Once you've got that screwed on nice and tight, grab your channel locks and tighten it the rest of the way. And we'll do the same thing for the other one. And then we can turn our washer back around, hook everything back up, and your repair is complete. Finally, don't forget to plug in your appliance. If you need to replace any parts for your appliances, you can find an OEM replacement part on our website, pcappliancerepair.com. Thanks for watching. And please don't forget to like, comment, and share our video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Your support helps us make more videos just like these for you to watch for free.